Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve of That Church, and here we are in Acts chapter 17. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Father God, you are so good to us. You are always speaking to our hearts, and you always are confirming those things that you're already speaking on the inside of us with that which we hear from preachers, that which we hear from even coming out our own mouths, we honor you and give you thanks for always helping us. We need you, definitely. But more than that, Father God, we want you come in and live big in our lives. Show us your ways of doing and being right. We choose to learn of you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen, right? All right, as we get into chapter 17, we're seeing Paul and Silas going... Um, remember, they separated from Barnabas, right? And here now they are they're moving through these different areas and we're seeing him coming in and encountering people just like sometimes it seems like we encounter. Here in the United States, we see people um, that, that know God and here there's a, a way that we're supposed to bring about that idea that the the gospel right and then there's to others we present it differently those that might not know about jesus haven't been around um any ministries or whatever so there's there's different ways to bring the gospel into different people's lives and here who are we always following that's right the holy spirit so as we're following the holy spirit today here we are, we're looking into chapter 17, and we'll just start off with verse 1, and we'll see how it opens it up, right? Now, after Paul and Silas had passed through uh, all these different areas, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews, right? Paul entered, as he usually did. Now, when when we see that he's usually doing something this is this is like his mode of operandi right the, this is how he gets into doing things so he's bringing the word to the jewish temple first so it's as and that's that's how jesus said to do it preach here in jerusalem to judea and to samaria those that were seeming to be enemies, right? And then to the outermost regions, all those areas outside, right? So here we see this in Paul's life. He's um, taking the word to the synagogue first. And here Paul entered, and as he did usually, and for three Sabbaths he reasoned and argued that, that word argued really is bringing forth, um, as, as a lawyer would bring forth an argument for his client, right? The why this shouldn't be this way or why this should be this way. So we're seeing, remember we've been seeing Paul change on how he's been bringing forth the gospel. So in three days, they're not all stirred up. You see that? All right. So he brings it forth in three days. Um, all right. And then verse three, explaining them and quoting passages. Isn't that what we do? We, we quote passages as the Holy Spirit is bringing something up in our hearts. We quote passages. So he's, He's taking them to passages, and then he's quoting others. Because these Jews know the scriptures. Now, if you're talking to somebody that doesn't know the scriptures, you're going to say things differently. So you should have that in the inside of you. How would I present this to somebody that has never heard about Jesus? Never heard about the Jews? Never heard about anything to do with this? How would I present that? And... Thinking about it, that most people have, and then there's there's people that just never have at all. They they've been, you know, hidden 
it, it's been hidden from us. So as we come down, we see this setting forth and proving that it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to raise from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ, the anointed one, the, the Messiah, the one sent from God to, to be just as what Moses had proclaimed, right? So they are familiar with these things, so he's presenting it this way to them, right? So then we come down and we see in verse 4, some of them accordingly were induced to believe and associated themselves with Paul and Silas. So they got born again. Did they get baptized? It doesn't say it. And when we see that he's, he's not all into making sure they all get baptized. Maybe the, these are just the overview points, right? So as we see that he spent three days there, it, it is possible that he went through and did a, a bunch of different teaching with these people, especially that were believing and that joined themselves to them, right? And then it comes down as they did a great number of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women. Now, I, I like to see it whenever it's talking about the Greeks and the women. Because you know that the Holy Spirit is really moving. And, and bringing people to understanding and siding with, the, the, with Paul and Silas, right? Now in verse 5 it says, But the unbelieving Jews were aroused to jealousy. And you see that... The, they went and got rascals out of out of the town and stirred up and incited all these people. Who's doing that? The wicked one. The, the wicked one is inciting them however he can. Because here, people are leaving the synagogue, joining themselves. He's, he's starting a group outside or separate from, uh, or as if it were another sect. Of, of the Jewish religion. So as we see these, these things taking place, he's been setting up churches, house churches. He's been setting up people and, and putting people in place. This, this is what we should be doing as well, making disciples. And then when they're disciples, you train up. And when you see people that are grabbing a hold of it, and running with it and 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 treating it as valuable in their life that's when you see that these people are ready to be set up and put in place and here you fast and pray like like he's been doing to find out who's ready listening to the holy spirit because the holy spirit is the one that is picking he knows the hearts god the holy spirit knows the hearts of man that then it's not up to Paul to pick. He's just listening. Who do you want set up here? Do you see it? These are good things for us to realize we're not doing the picking. Thank God. Um, then it comes down in verse 6. But when they failed to find them, was somebody lying? So they, they go and attack Jason's house. And, and here we see that Jason's hiding them. Jason's um, deluding these, these people that are all in this riot, right? Coming out to find them. And I like to say, was he lying? What, was he deceiving them? What, was he hiding Paul and Silas? Yeah. Yeah. He, I would say there was a certain amount hidden there. Well, there's that other side. Remember, Jesus walked through the midst of them. Were, were they hidden that way? Were they hidden in the Holy Spirit? Did Jason not have them in his house? Jason received them in his house, but, well, where are they now? And, and here we see in these next couple of verses that, uh, and, the both, and both the crowd and the city authorities on hearing this were irated, uh, ir irritated, right? <laughs> Stirred up and troubled. And when they had taken security, bail from Jason, 
and others, they let them go. Now, that sounds like something that would happen today. And maybe this is where some of the, the hierarchy, the, the places of authority have gotten some ideas. They've taken it all the way back from these times, how they took security from people to make sure that they're going to come back. So in that same way, when it comes down to verse 11, it says that, I'm sorry, verse 10. Actually, I want to read verse 9 just to straighten out what I've already said. And when they had taken security, Baal from Jason and others, they let them go. Now the brethren at once sent Paul and Silas away. So it was a group of them. It doesn't just say Jason any longer. It says, and the brethren sent Paul and Silas away by night uh, to this other place, Berea. And when they arrived, they entered the synagogues of the Jews. Now here, he's doing the same thing. He's going to the Jews first, letting them see this. And, and here, I, I want you to see, he spent three days with them here. And that's what he said he was doing all the other places. Spending at least three days with them. So, in this one, and we'll see later on in, in the chapters coming up, that he only went to him and brought it to him once from then on and then went to the Gentiles because he saw that he was called to go to the Gentiles and the Jews, all he was doing was irritating them and causing a, a problem. So, so as, as we look at this next verse here in verse 11, it says, Now these Jews in this uh, Berea, these Jews were better disposed and more noble than those in Thessalonica, for they were entirely ready and accepted and welcomed the message concerning the attainment through Christ of eternal salvation in the kingdom of God, with inclination of mind and eagerness, searching and examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Now, daily, so he spent many days there. So, as or, or was it just those three days again? It, it could be either way. But as as we're looking at this, we're seeing men that men and most likely women that were had hearts that were open, hearts that they've already been seeking God, and God's already been working in their lives, and they are open and ready to hear this because something. They, they know something's changed, all right? And then many of them were become believers together and not a few of the prominent Greeks, women, as well as men, right? So we are seeing women in this one as well. We're seeing the Greeks. We're seeing not just Greeks and women talked about, but men. Why, why is it differentiating? So... I would I believe that the Gentiles, even those outside, were coming in. Other people, people that might not have even been part of what would be considered a Greek and here uh, or a Jew, but others. I think others were coming in. That's why I believe it says that, man. All right. Then in verse 13 it says, But when the Jews of Thessalonica learned that the word of God concerning the attainment through Christ of eternal salvation in the kingdom of God, was also preached by Paul in Bureau, Bureau, however you say that, they came there too, disturbing and inciting the masses. Now, why are they so against this? Because they have their traditions, they have the way it's been done for these thousands of years, and here... What, what happened in the Garden of Eden? Uh, Adam didn't subdue the garden, remember? So are they trying to subdue? Are they trying to subdue for, for God's good? It could be. That men have, when, when they are, are, are thinking that they're doing it for God, wasn't that not what Paul was doing? Saul before that he thought he was doing this for God 
And as, as we come down and, and they see that this is being all stirred up, it says, those who escorted Paul, they took him out, but Silas and Timothy remained behind. Remember, now he's got Timothy with him and Silas is with him. And why does Silas and Timothy, why can they remain and they're not incited against them, but they're incited against Paul only, is, it, is the way it seems. As, as we see this, is it Paul's way of arguing and, and having such understanding of the scriptures that he can refute it with everybody? And here, boy, he can, he can really push it to that limit. And that's what it's seeming as if, if it is happening. So he's pushing it to the limit, but Silas and Timothy remain behind and set up the church, set up the, the, the disciples, keep on training them, setting them in place to keep on going with God, right? In this new understanding, right? As, as we see this, then we see that um, things are changing for the better. <laughs> so as, as we're seeing these things are changing, um, we're, we're seeing that Paul is all the while learning different things of, about how to do this. I believe the Holy Spirit's working with him. And, and we'll see this again tomorrow. But um, it says, Now while Paul, Paul was waiting, uh, awaiting them in Athens, his spirit was grieved and aroused to anger. Now, is, is God, the Holy Spirit, in him, arousing him to anger? It, it can happen. And, and there are these things. As he, he saw that the city was full of idols. Now, there's, there's an, ar, an, an anger that is good. And there's an anger that isn't. When you're incited and you're incited to just go and argue with people all the time is that right so is there not scriptures about not arguing so there's a certain amount of things here as as paul is getting into these um he he let's just read verse 17 so he reasoned and argued and here he's bringing forth and ar forth an argument he's as a lawyer he's he's been well trained to know how to be in the council right in the the synagogue with the jews and those who worship there and in the marketplace so he's getting out into the city this is this is not what it seems like he's been doing in these other places but whenever it says that there were these other men as well that came in I think that was probably from the city or maybe from the marketplace. So as, as we're going here and we're seeing that this new idea comes into play that he's going out into the marketplace, well, that, that's a good thing. Where, the, where assemblies are held day after day and they who chanced to be there. Now he's going out to an area where, where people hung out and discuss things so this is where we we see that he goes before um Oropicus, or mars hill uh, auditorium these people hear this guy and in in the uh, amplified it says this he says um what is this babbler with his scrape heap uh, scrap heap of learning trying to say <laughs> there's there's other ways to say that, um, but they're saying he's he's acting like he has all this. He's like a pseudo um, built up, trying to show that he has all this wisdom, but he doesn't. That's what they're kind of trying to say. Pseudo pseudo uh, 
intelligence, right? And here he's trying to put it on. And so he, they grab him and take him to uh, Mars Hill, and then they set him forth. Uh, for you set forth some startling things, foreign and strange to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, just what these things mean. Now, took him before these these uh, main people and said, here, we want to know if this is true. What, what is this? And so they take him in there, and here, he, Paul has another opportunity to bring the gospel before a whole lot of people. And here, they're, he's presenting it a specific way. And that's where you see that, that he, he goes in, and, and so Paul standing in the center of the Mars Hill. Men of Athens, I perceive in every way, on every hand, and with every turn I make, that you are most religious. Most religious? Yeah, is religion any good? This, this really points out that religion isn't necessarily always good. <laughs> it's, it's man's idea of trying to do something before, what, demons or God? Either one, but it's 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 just religious. It's a it's it's doing it over and over again, and really not getting anywhere. Is is a, an idea there, right? It's diluted, so that you are most religious and very reverent to demons. Now. That would seem like he just smacked them in the face, but uh, it doesn't. It doesn't seem that way as, as he passes on here. For I passed along and carefully observed your objects of worship. I came also upon an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. Now, what you are already worshiping as unknown, this I set forth to you. What? The, this unknown God, this this thing set up in their culture already, <laughs> they have it set up to an unknown God, just in case there's some other God that we don't know about. We, we want to not leave you out. But coming into that, he uses that as an in, as as something they will receive. And, and oh, you're you're talking about, the unknown God. Oh, the unknown God? <laughs> and here, he brings it in as a way, just a, a, a different way here. The God who produced and formed the world and all things in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in handmade shrines. As, as we're seeing these things, they are... He's pointing out, taking them from what they are doing to what God wants them to hear, what God wants them to see, what God wants them to understand. And here it goes through this whole discourse. And then I, I really like what it says here in 28. It says, for in him, talking about God, we live and move and have our being as even some of your own poets have said. So he was seeing poetry thereabouts, for we are also his offspring. Now, he's, he's bringing the understanding. Does he know all of this stuff? No, it's the Holy Spirit bringing these things up, helping them to input what needs to be inputted so that certain will believe. And realize the Holy Spirit's working in their hearts. Where, where is that back in John? Right? We we we're we're, uh, we're seeing this this that which um, it clearly states here in uh, chapter sixteen of John's Gospel. It says, "When He, the Holy Spirit, comes, He will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness." And about judgment. Now, this is what the Holy Spirit is doing in the hearts of the hearers. And he's, he's 
confirming what is coming through the mouth of Paul and confirming what the Holy Spirit's already been saying to these people's hearts. And here, that some of them are have have decided, yeah, those that sounds right. That that sounds good. And you see this here. But I, what I want to point out before we get to that, verse thirty: such former ages of ignorance, God, it is true, ignored and allowed to pass unnoticed. He's saying, now these things of the past, he's he's let it slide. He's He's overlooked the, those things that you're getting into. But here I am to bring you to repent of those things. Th this is what he gets into. It is true and ignored. But now he charges all people everywhere to repent. This is one of the key things that we need to keep in our own lives. Day by day. If if we get a little off, if we get led, a, led astray, if we, we go start going after something else, are, are we just, we just don't feel like things are, are holy anymore, are, are spectacular anymore. When the spectacular wears off and you start to waver and be like, ah, I just don't want to read my Bible again today. No, where's that coming from? The wicked one's trying to lead you astray. And if you start going down that path, taking those thoughts, that's where you need to repent. Get, get rid of that and say, no, <laughs> I know this is true. You've been showing yourself strong on my behalf all these days, and I, I, I am staying with you, Father God. No matter what it looks like, I'm staying with you. And these are things that we have to hold on to. But look what he, he talks about next. He talks about the end from right then. Because he has a fixed, fixed a day when he will judge the world righteously, justly, by a man whom he has destined and appointed for that task. Now, this is where we see that Jesus is 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 going to be the judge all things have been placed into jesus's hands and remember the holy spirit is going to show those things unto us that then we can show them unto other people do you see how that all it works together and here they're he's pointing out jesus is that one right and he has made this credible and given conviction and assurance and evidence to everyone by raising him from the dead. Now, when he says this, it seems, oh, oh, somebody's raised, been raised from the dead. Now, when they heard, had heard that there had been a resurrection from the dead, some scoffed. But others said, we will hear you again about this matter. So there's there's people on the fence. There's people that are on the other side of the fence. And then there's people that grab a hold of it and move forward with it. You'll find this everywhere you go. So Paul went out from among them, but some men were on his side and joined him and believed, became Christians. Among them were these two people and a judge right and and this woman named Damaris and some others with them now as we see that women are much more being it, it seems like they're being more spoken about why is it that things are changing things are always changing things are being brought out a little bit more He's going among the Gentiles. The Gentiles are already letting women do things in their society. Is it the Jews that are just keeping the women out of? No, no. You're seeing it in both. And and here, you're seeing it in Greek culture. You're seeing it in, in, in the Jewish culture that things are changing. Now, soci as society changes, does the message change? No. The message stays the same. And as we hold to the message, no matter how we're feeling today, 
No matter how we might feel tomorrow, or no matter how we felt yesterday, we have this one thing that we need to keep on doing. Checking ourselves out, making sure we're still in faith, and repenting for moving away from God. Taking thought, right? The, the enemy's, the, his way into your life is to plant thoughts in you and see what you'll take, see what you'll do. And, and what you start to entertain, then he'll, he'll keep poking you with it and bring others around you to talk about that same thing. The, the wicked one is, is trying to deceive. But when you get in the presence of God, when you get amongst other people, you can sense the presence of God and Him him coming in and helping you with those thoughts. Helping you, showing you what's real. That's what we see on our Friday night service whenever we're getting together and we start worshiping together. Or, or we'll, we'll start praying for each other. Different things happen. And we can see that what is the truth. And we'll, we can stick with it together. It takes people working together. So always remember that God loves you and we love you at that church and that Jesus is Lord. Now take your place as you take his anointing to your world. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining. We'll see you again.